Welcome back, Amani. Hi. Hi, Lily. Hi, I I wanted to um talk about today with you. Somebody on Twitter and they had you know the account called the Socialist Party and some people from there, or some uh, communism believers, lecture me about you did not survive communism. The real communist society never existed. I was uh, shocked. But not really, because uh, you know those students uh, or young people they don't know real history. They still believe utopian society that is sold to them by the communists. That but they we know that the communism in theory versus reality we know the difference because we are survivors of communism by growing up in China. So I want to talk about today. Um, Communism, in theory, we can talk about what Karl Marx wrote in Communist Manifesto, and uh, look at the People's Republic of China Constitution, because their um, theory is that uh, China stay on everything, and Communist Party control everything. But in their theory, it should be people who own everything, a collective concept of people. So that's something we want to, you know, really discuss and tell our stories. So do you do you have a, a something that you want to share uh, on the screen today? Um, yes, I do. Um, and uh, also, I want to um, um, make that point too. Like the um, the utopian society where the people own everything was taught to us in when we were um, students in school as well. And I did when I was like uh, in middle school. We took we we had Marxist philosophy. Um, class it was mandatory class and I did ask that question I said um, if in under communism the people own everything and how come the communist party is, own, um, tell, tells the people what to do like am I one not one of the people um, and the teacher answered me and at the time it seemed it seemed reasonable because that was the only uh, doctrine that I ever received so the teacher answered um Yes, the, in our communist, uh, socialist communist society, the people own everything, but the communist party represents the people. Therefore, the communist party knows what's the best, uh, what, what's in the, in the people's best interest. Therefore, the communist party makes decisions for the people. And as a child, I accepted that, obviously. And uh, once I grew up, I realized, okay, that is actually... Um, not uh, not the real way to not not the honest way to say that the communist par communist party will just be in control of the people. People, therefore, you know, the people must submit to the party's will. I mean, I was uh, totally brainwashed, and you know, um, that's all we were told too. The people, uh, mm -hmm. people own the land, and people, um, you know, own the everything. And um, but the communist party uh, represents the people. But we never elected them, though. We were never allowed to vote, right? It's mm -hmm. like, a, how, how can they represent us? Even today, Americans, uh, you know, lots of the young people don't know. There's mm -hmm. no elections. And people's Congress are rubber stamp people's Congress. And it was all internally decided. I never voted in China. I was there about 24 years. And, and you were there actually a lot longer. You lived mm -hmm. in China for how many years? 31 years. Yeah. So did and I did vote. Um, what most people don't know is that we do have, uh, you know, uh, elections uh, that for people's co representative Congress, uh, like uh, every several years, they will set up a, an election in, um, um, in like people who are el eligible to vote. Like for me, I was very fortunate. I was the fortunate few who actually worked inside the, gov the central government's propaganda se sector. Therefore, we were privileged to actually be given a ballot to to vote for the people's representative one of them one of the years i remember it was maybe around year 2004 or 2005 so there was an election going on um so they set up ballot boxes um in our uh, work organization they posted um pictures of the candidates who were all handpicked by you know by the organization, and um, and, and and with, with a bio of each of them, very simple bio, just name, um, age, um, com um, communist party member or not, um, ethnicity, and uh, 
working organization and awards that they have received from the from the government. So each one of us was given a small card with our name on it, and that said, vote. And uh, um, so we were all given a, a card and told to go to the, the ballot box and vote for this particular person that um, the organization had already picked. Um, so I was I was young and I even I did I had never truly voted in my life, but even I thought there was something wrong with it. I was like I so I told my supervisor I said I don't know any of these candidates. I don't know who they stand for, what they who they represent, what they stand for. I'm not gonna choose them as my representative. So I gave that. Um, tickets or cards back to my supervisor and said, I, I, I give up, I, I abstain from voting. And then she just took it and never said anything. And by the end of the day, when I went back to my desk, um, before wrapping up my work for the day, I saw the card was returned to my desk with a stamp over my name that said voted. Oh, wow. I had no idea who I voted for. You get bra. <laughs> It's all fake. Everything is fake. It's for show. It's just for show. Like so, they can they can call themselves a democracy. In yeah. Well, I I I I was an assistant professor in law school. I was I don't remember if I was ever giving a ballot or、um, I never voted in China. And I also remember after they took over Hong Kong, supposed to be one country, two systems, and. And、uh, they should have elections in Hong Kong, but、um, later they trying to change the system.、Um, say that you know what, Beijing is going to nominate your candidates for、mm -hmm. chief executive officer one two three, and、uh, so basically they force you to choose all of their candidates. That's、mm -hmm. just you know people、yeah. the people in the West should know that's not real democracy. And、yeah. uh, and so sad, you know. Talk about Hong Kong. That's like a, another day、um, story.、Mm -hmm. um, so I heard that in our universities today, American college campuses, Karl Marx, Engels, Burke,、uh, Communist Manifesto, was actually more widely read than the Founding Fathers document, that like the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean to us? That's just like shocking. Do you have、uh, some、uh, stuff to share about the Communist、mm -hmm. Manifesto? Let, let's go over whatever they are trying to advocate in the Marxist book. Okay, yeah, let me share a screen. Wow, so you got、uh, the ten, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can see them right. The the ten basically policies that the that that are outlined in the.、Um, Um, Communist Manifesto. So the number one is about abolition of property in land and application of all rents of land to public purposes. So that, like, it's just the first item shows you what what they want to do. Like, they want to just completely get rid of private property. So well, you know, when、thing? we grew up in China, we I never heard of this concept of a private property because、uh, exactly. everything was owned by people,、mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and of course later when I wake up, it's like oh, people means they stay because we were so poor. My parents were poor working class. You would think they are the proletarian, right? And they should own something. No, they own nothing. <laughs> they were、okay. they were told how much food rationing coupon they should get. <laughs> Exactly. So it's like once you get rid of private property, what's what's the result of that? You know, it's、uh, who's gonna like you know in in the claim that the public the public owns it, but who's gonna manage it? You know, of course, it's like we can't just all、state. go. Exactly.、Yeah. We, well, yeah, in we today's China Constitution,、mm -hmm. they still say the land belong、mm -hmm. to the people. Yeah. So it's so, when they say yeah, when they say the people, they actually mean the party, the state, the. Well, it's one-party one party state. If、mm -hmm. they they did say belong to the state in some occasions, but the、mm -hmm. state is controlled by one party, and、uh, that's why I never bought any real estate in China, even though I'm a real estate kind of investor here in this country. Because I know when you buy apartment, and、uh, mm -hmm. when you buy a building, you only own the building above the land.、Mm -hmm. The land under your structure, the building, it belongs to the state. So they still could take that away from you, even though they say, "Well, you can lease this land for like what fifty or seventy years or something." But seventy years, still,、yeah. they can take they they can do anything with it. They can abolish、mm -hmm. it. They can you know force you to、um, vacant if they have、uh, 
so-called, uh, you know, claim of public use for the greater good and give you some compensation, but sometimes the compensation is not really market value. So you hear horror stories like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, I think like when you, uh, you don't even own the, own the building itself. Like you, when you buy an apartment, like at least this was the case when I was there, when they um, uh, wrote out the, the private property law, it's that when you buy an apartment, you don't even own the apartment. You you uh, own the right to use it for 70 years. So you're basically renting it from the state. So the only rights you have um, when you buy, when you, you know, purchase a, an apartment is to sell it again. You can re renovate it and you can rent it and you can sell it, but you do not truly own it ever. It's, it, everything belongs to the public, AKA the state. <laughs> Wow, that's like that, that. How can you increase people's confidence to buy to invest? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a I I wouldn't. So what is the number two says here? Yeah, let's see. I have a progressive or gra graduated income tax. <laughs> is that uh, what we have in America? <laughs> yeah. Progressive well, or um um you know or, like a graduate income tax. So it's not a flat tax. Like a, you go to church, they ask for your donations. 10, mm -hmm. 15 percent flat. Mm -hmm. Everybody is equal pay same percentages. But mm -hmm. here say the progressive graduate income tax. Yeah. yeah. That, that means even... Everybody has different percentages to pay. Yeah. So the more you make, the more you pay. OK, fine. You know, it's uh, I guess you make more, you contribute, you contribute more, you know, I, as within reason, you know, I don't have anything fundamentally against it. Um, but look at the third one. Abolition of all rights of inheritance. So you have no right to inherit anything from your parents, no matter how hard they worked to provide for you. If yeah, all rights. Well, inheritance. inheritance has tax too. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, here in America, you know, they yeah. they, they have uh, uncertain tax rates above certain mm -hmm. amount, mm -hmm. and uh, and I can say all that. You know, so called their um, goals or, or their policies um, that reflect in you know China's constitution too. Mm -hmm. And number four is a. Uh, uh, it's it's so small. It's confiscation. confiscation, confiscation of the property of all immigrant immigrants and rebels. So if all immigrants like you and I, <laughs> and rebels who disagree with the the government, uh, all of our properties will be confiscated. Yeah. So the state has the power to mm -hmm. um, confiscate your property, mm -hmm. and uh, does that remind you like they 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 even billionaires in China sometimes uh, their companies get seized. Mm -hmm. And property is confiscated, mm -hmm. and especially they use the anti-corruption campaign under mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the Xi regime. That mm -hmm. uh, if you if you deem to be corrupted, and or sometimes or who knows, right? There's no no really due process or rule of law. Mm -hmm. Then they just come seize your property, assets, freeze your bank account overnight. Mm -hmm. And and I heard that even the for example, uh, you know, Jack Ma, his mm -hmm. Alibaba. And, mm -hmm. you know, probably most of me, he used to be the richest person in China as a private uh, enterprise, um, you know, um, prize person. And then he had to flee to overseas. And, and after he criticized government regulations, the e economic policies, and, and then they basically to force him to retire and uh, make him to contribute to charities and to pay a huge fine. It's like being his daughter's fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, it's a... It's amazing. I think uh, the, I hope the American entrepreneurs and capitalists are paying attention to see what a communist regime can do to your private, you know, mm -hmm. property. Yeah. As soon as they consider you a rebel, people like you, you know, us, we're immigrants and, and rebels. Like if you uh, go against the government or go against the party, um, yeah, you, you all of your property is confiscated. Just like you said, you know, what happens in China, even if you're a billionaire, yeah, they can just take everything away overnight. Yeah. Centralized the, number five is a centralization of credit in the hands of the state mm -hmm. by, means by means of a national, a national bank. bank with a state capital mm -hmm. and uh, exclusive monopoly. Mm -hmm. Wow! So it's basically banking taking over all of banking. So yeah, um, yeah, all of your money you know belongs to the state and centralization of credit in the hands of the state. So the entire so the government basically. Um, yeah, it's the social credit system. Basically, the government decides, you know. Um, yeah, if you're poor, yeah. if your social credit score is low, as mm -hmm. business, as individual, you cannot get along, you know. Mm -hmm. Control your <laughs> you life. Cannot, you know, yeah. yeah, governments can 
completely take over control of your your life. You won't be able to buy things. You won't be able to go outside. You won't be able to travel. You know your your life. You basically give up your life control to the government. Yeah. Yeah. Central banks are you know are thinking about even using digital currency. So that way they can control. It's like the digital renminbi,、mm-hmm. and they're trying to experiment now in China. Ten percent of people regard as digital renminbi yuan, and then you you get trying to get rid of or cash. Also, they can track you. Then they can also shut down, freeze you. You know the the the, the financial transactions, and、uh, and I'm very worried about this、uh, an ESG that、uh, the banks are pushing. The 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 globals are pushing. And the ways the private like a、uh, um, credit rating agencies. So basically, ESG is like a、um, environmental social governance, and they use the normally climate change and、um, the agenda to measure your state, city, and the company, your business the score. And the, if you know, don't fit their certain industries, you don't have.、Uh, um, Like、uh, equity on your board and whatever they use to measure you, that's just like a, just push push down the politics into business into economies. Like a, like a Utah State, for example, can have very good very good、um, mathematically financial、um, condition, but because they they have lots of oil gas industries, and they can say, hey, like a SP five hundred rating global agency can say your state. ESG score is not that great because you are heavily invested in not the right kind of industries. I mean, that's a scary when you think about this. It just matches, you、mm-hmm. know, what the you know car marks and are talking about、Absolutely. centralized credit.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's our capital capital market, you know.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is very scary because, like you know, Karl Marx knew very well. You know, ec- economic economy is the foundation of everything. When you control a person's stomach, like when you know you you control their way of life, so it's like when people are hungry, there's no way for them to to really、uh, think of anything else. Food is the first, you know, food,、uh, food and basic needs is is the foundation of everything else. So yeah, to to control people's finances、um, is to control people's life. Yeah, yeah. There's some、uh, people have to file bankruptcy、um, because they, if they don't meet certain criteria, and、uh, um, Then they cannot get loans.、Mm-hmm. Then their business will be destroyed,、mm-hmm. and、uh, this is going to affect the farmers now. And、uh, like, what kind of、uh, feed they have to buy? And you heard of Sri Lanka. I mean, some countries even file bankruptcy because they just cannot, in order to comply with this,、uh, you know, ESG, and、uh, they 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 just cannot, you know, really to to you know keep up, you know, to to have a strong economy and and、uh, and default on their debt. Yeah, it's scary. Look at number six. What、mm-hmm. is, is that? Centralization. Centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state. Is that、uh, is that not scary? <laughs> As、yeah. if the first five were not scary enough. So basically, the means of communication. You know,、um, you know, like phones, whatever, computer, emails, everything, and transport. You know, the you go outside. You,、um, you know, cars. Um, airports, whatever, in the hands of the state. So basically, it controls your movement and controls your communication with other people.、Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so like you worked for the China's propaganda department for eight years. You know how that works. It's party、mm-hmm. is always right,、mm-hmm. and、uh, then you can control the masses by having propaganda every day,、mm-hmm. tell the same lies, and then the lies just become truth, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and transportation too. So you don't. You have to go out. You have to get a permit to to even travel. You know, like we did. Like we had to get a permit to even get a passport. And so it's like, yeah, they control your your mind, and then they control your movements, and then you become nothing but a slave to the stage. Yeah. Yeah, but they still tell you, "What doing this good for your people? Because、yeah. we represent the people." <laughs> Is、exactly. that what the socialist on Twitter trying to trying to like lecture me?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> It's like, oh, we're the important part of the people. Yeah. Because、But、they, they don't be- understand the consequences here. <laughs> yeah, they believe they know better than everyone else, and they believe they represent the best interest in other in you. You know, so it's like it is extremely, extremely arrogant, extremely arrogant for them to 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 do that. Yeah. And next one is the extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. 
The bringing into cultivation of wastelands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with a common plan. So basically, yeah, extending state-owned factories and and means of production. So yeah, yeah reduce that's private. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we that's why we did not hear about private industries, factories. Mm -hmm. And when I mm -hmm. grew up after economic reform, actually that uh, you know China adopted the so-called socialist free market economy. Mm -hmm. So they allow some private ownership of business, properties, and factories. And that's why China's economy boomed in the past, you know, 40 years. And lots of people work very hard, incentivized to be entrepreneurs and and uh, you know the China economy become the second largest economy, but but it seems like after she took power, and he wanted to actually to convert lots of collectives or private owned business back to a state enterprises which is controlled by the state. It's subject to central planning. It's like China is going backwards. That's why their economy now is uh, you know not very good, not very strong. Yeah, it's on the verge of, of collapsing, I have to say. And uh, so yeah, what is next one then? The number number eight, equal liability of all to work, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. That's exactly what Mao did, isn't it? Like yes. Yeah, Mao did the, the, the yeah, like literally that's what, what he did. He in during his great leap forward, he wanted to establish an industrial army, like all the people were called to abandon their own careers to to produce steel to um, yeah to have their their um, backyard furnaces to pr to produce all these um, iron iron nuggets steel and iron nuggets um, that basically created a massive famine like even people's walks and the um, pans and pots and pans were melted down to make these steel nuggets um, so people had nothing to cook with and lots of people <laughs> like just yeah, uh, starved to death, and um, and the, especially for agriculture, like Mao wanted to produce massive amount of rice, so like the, he um, told people to grow rice on mountains, even on mountains. When rice does not grow on mountains, rice <laughs> has to grow, yeah, in the in very wet soil. But people like during the even during the Cultural Revolution as well, the the peasants or and the Red Guards who were sent. Uh, to the countryside i remember my teacher telling me that story like they had to carry just buckets of water like every day up a walk all the way up to the mountains and to pour into the rice fields they were trying to grow on the mountains and it was just like yeah that's and, and then of course massive crops died and because that's unnatural that's against the nature nature's rule and people starve to death so it's it's just scary stuff yeah that uh, i remember that uh, when I was little, people always talk about, you know, how many people starving to death um, during the Great Leap Forward started by Mao, but they had no idea they were blaming or brainwashed to believe the reasons for people starving to death is because natural disasters, drought, flooding, blame on weather, but they never blamed Mao's central planning, economical, political policy to force peasants how to grow food. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when, you know, once people, uh, their crops died, they grew really close because Mao told them, hey, we need to have great production. You know, we need to pass the Soviet Union in terms of agriculture, you know, uh, output. And uh, so crops died. And then after peasants turn over their food to, you know, government, they have nothing left to eat. When people started to starve to death and they were afraid to tell Mao in, in, in Beijing because, you know, Make the since all the officials were appointed, one party control, they were not elected by people, so they were even afraid to tell the truth, you know, to say, hey, we have people starving to death. Now we need to somehow amend the policies. And and uh, um, but all I remember, I honestly did not know how many people died of that mass famine until I come to this country and, and then found out why they died. I mean, I remember I cried once I found out the truth in America. Because I, I it's like oh, I was told the lie all my life. And I told my family members, my parents in their 70s, they were speechless. You know how many people died estimated and why? They had no idea. So I'm sure there are lots of people in China today who still don't know the truth. How many yeah. people died of starvation? Yeah, I had no idea until I came to America too. Uh, I think it was in 2009. Um, 
a book uh, by the secret, former secretary of, of China's former um, prime minister, uh, premier uh, Zhao Ziyang, his um, secretary Bao Tong, Mr. Bao Tong, he, he wrote a book that was um, um, uh, basically uh, Mr. Zhao Ziyang's um, uh, bio, uh, auto, autobiography. And uh, that was published in 2009 and I bought it here. That was only published uh, outside of China, of course. And I, I, I read it in it that um, Premier Zhao Ziyang's estimate of how many people died was between forty was between forty million to sixty million people who starved to death during the three years of Great Great Leap Forward campaign, and I was just shocked. And and yeah, and, and that was I think the moment that I actually started to question the entire narrative of communism because before that, I was. Uh, um, you know, I was rebelling against the government because of my own experience, but I had never truly thought of, you know, thought of the ideology itself as something that could inspire such incredible inhuman um, uh, atrocity. Yeah. Yeah. So it, look at the last one, 10. Can you read that loud? The last free one is free education. free education for all children in public schools, abolition of children's factory labor in its present form, combination of education with industrial production, et cetera, et cetera. Well, okay, I have no, I have no problem with abolition of children's factory labor. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm okay, you know, I, I, I don't think children should be forced to work, but free education for all children in public schools and combination of education with, with industrial production. So basically it's like, you know, even though we abolish child labor, but their education is supposed to be combined with, you know, our industrial <laughs> production goal. And so it's... it's so the country them. needs you to be workers. So it's like, yeah, exactly. it's, like it's a workforce development. I saw mm -hmm. the education, I mean, you know, partially it is to gain job skills, but also critical thinking skills as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, that's the American way, I thought. That's why people should know their rights as uh, individuals. And uh, they and should know where those rights come from. They're not coming from the government or other groups. Your rights come with you. Be born as a human being and uh, come from basically your creator and God. It's some, uh, you know, like uh, uh, not any human beings can or groups can take that rights away. And uh, but it seems like, you know, people, I, I, I don't get it. The people in this country, if they were not taught by their parents or in schools. And then they really believe in government. And they believe like people worship, absolutely worship public schools. Even though I understand sometimes they are in the state constitution to say, okay, our state will have public schools through so property taxes and we're gonna educate our children. But now you see public schools and education is so centralized. It's like, a, it, it's, well, started. I, mean, I remember, you know, I was strongly opposed to Obama administration pushing Common Core on all the states and use the federal dollars to lure them to adopt Common Core. Otherwise, you don't get money. And there's a, it's like a, lots and lots of oppositions. And it's not rigorous. It's dumped down on our children. It's a centralized curriculum, standards, and also data collection and tracking. And, uh, and now, you know, with the federal law, it's basically codified, um, you know, for, for the centralized education. So what do you think about Americans' mindset about just like, do they even understand that uh, free education for all the kids come from the communist manifesto? <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I, I mean, I, I think Americans are, they've had, had I, I think the appeal of like free education for, for all, it's very, very obvious, you know, it, it sounds good. It sounds good on paper, just like free food for all, free healthcare for all, yeah, free education for all. And um, it's just, it has an appeal to it. And it's very easy to lure people in with, with that kind of concept. And then um, once you, I think Americans have been, you know, very comfortable, living very comfortably for, for the last, you know, multiple decades, you know, it's, um, and um, people have not really truly experienced, you know, anything that can be, uh, can have a disastrous outcome, like when it comes to um, indoctrinating, in you know, having your, teaching your children the right values, basically preparing them for what's the reality of life. Because there is, um, you know, the force of nature, I think it's, it, it's indefiable. Like, 
like you can just like what Mao did with the with his will, like um during during his great leap forward, and then the slogan was like uh da da di yo da right? So it's like um the, the the land will produce as much as we want it to produce. Um but that's that's not the reality. There is a rule of law, rule of law in nature. It's like you, you know, that nature is not gonna just just comply to our humans' will, you know, just because we 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 wanted to do, uh, you know, uh, what we wanted to do. Um, so it's like you know, a, a real education is to learn about that law, to learn about that nature, that for, force of nature, and to learn to um, uh, work with it and and to improve ourselves, improve our own skills to produce more and to create a more prosperous uh, society. But yeah, when it, it comes to the communist's mindset is that they believe that humans are, um, you know, um, are the master of, of the universe, so to speak, you know, like, so you, you, you yeah, so I think it's, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, when you think about it, um, that I'm glad to say today there's a movement, people waking up from past two or three years online schooling during the pandemic, what their kids have been taught. So there's a movement of school choice mm -hmm. and the parental rights and uh, homeschooling. And, and the, that's all good thing because the people realize, oh, the, the traditional public was in my mind. It's not today's public schools are becoming indoctrination centers. I mean, it's all government schools. And uh, if people know what their kids are learning today about I don't know where they got there some curriculum from teachers union or from some other organizations. It's all about, you know, hate America and, uh, and hate white people and uh, transgenderism. And like you said, change nature, change human nature, like uh, pronouns and lots of, lots of, uh, you know, um, genders and, and the young people are confused. So they're not really focused on even learning real skills and the cancel science. Like, hey, we don't have to, like Mao did, right? No, the land can produce as much as we want to produce. It's just, it just like totally even don't, don't bother with, uh, with nature, with, with, with science. And most cultural revolution destroy for all, including destroy, you know, the, the, the old traditional beliefs and redefine social norms and all that. Um, so I hope people really go to read Communist Manifesto with an open mind and critical mind to say, you know, oh, that is the Marxism that the, all the future communist, communist leaders used to based on. Is that good for human beings? And uh, no real communist society existed, but 100 million people died under 100 years of communism. How many people they want to experiment with their lives in order to achieve their utopia in theory, in paper? It will never come, you know? Yeah, let, let's compare with the China's constitution to see what they said based on the um, communist manifesto. Uh, basically, you know, a foreign ideology destroyed the age old traditional Chinese culture. It's uh, very, very sad. People should know China is not always this way. Mm -hmm. There is, there was a China, you know, before communism and uh, so I mean, if if you can pull up, maybe people later also can go through the online search themselves to say, you know, like the Constitution of um, People's Republic of China, which is I think most recently kind of amended, 2018, to add the you know to abolish the term limits for the president of uh, China, so she can be basically the president forever. Yeah. Can, can you see the article one? Yeah, um, yeah. can you see it? it it's yeah. very small. I just can't so remember. article one, yeah, the People's Republic of China is a socialist state under the people's democratic dictatorship led by the working class and based on the alliance of workers and peasants. The socialist system is the basic system of the People's Republic of China. Disruption of the socialist system by any organization or individuals is prohibited. That's the article one. Wow, I already smell the violence in the <laughs> government force. <laughs> right, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's contradictive to itself. Like, how can you be democratic and dictatorship at the same time? But that's that's what they do. They, you know, they, they call contradictive truths. Like, yeah, that's also what I was... The words, the definitions of words. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so... 
So it's basically, uh, it, they, they call it a, a democratic dictatorship because the party represents all the people, right? So the people are dictating um, <laughs> the terms of, uh, of how this country should be run. But at the same time, the party represents the people. So who's actually dictating the terms of how this country should be run is still the, con is still the party. So it's... It's, it's interesting. Worse, they right? use a socialist, right? They use a socialist country, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, um, some people um, um, they, they they did say, "Oh, China is no longer a communist country because uh, they do allow some private property ownership." And and uh, so China re reinnovated itself, you know, when they did the economic reform. So mm -hmm. they call that socialist country with a um, market economy characteristics, always oh, special Chinese characteristics. That means mm -hmm. we, we want to adapt to some uh, market economy because after Mao's Cultural Revolution, Chinese people were starving, economy about to totally collapse. So they had to open up to some kind of market economy, allow, for example, peasants to you know um, decide how much, how to grow food, how much, and uh, then keep what they, you know, and they can, you know, after they turn over to state, they can keep some portion for themselves instead of starving to death. So, so that just give people like the, the incentives to work hard and to manage effectively, grow things effectively. And the, the agriculture actually production went to like tenfold after that, which is a good thing. I support the economic reforms, but they still call, of course, the socialist country and after they adopt a little bit free market. So free market works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you see people, and, you know, in this country, young people constantly demonize free market capitalism. They don't understand how capital works. And, you, you know, that uh, and they say, oh, China is not a communist country, but still dominated by one party control, which is called CCP, China's Communist Party. And uh, it's almost like a fascist country. You can have some private property, and but the world going to, you know, tell you what to do with your property and we can take away any time. Um, yeah. So that's that's the number. What is number two? Number two is all power in the People's Republic of China belongs to the people. The national people, <laughs> doesn't that just sound wonderful? Yeah. The National People's Congress and the local People's Congresses at various levels are the organs through which the people exercise state power. The people administer state affairs and manage economic and cultural undertakings and social affairs through various channels and in various ways in accordance with the provisions of law. So... Yeah, this is the and the other one, the People's Congress, for example, the National People's Congress. That's what I was talking about um, in the beginning of, of our um, of our talk. That um, um, yeah, like it, it, it was supposed to be elected by the people, right? And I will I will actually happen to participate in one of the elections, but as it turned out, it was all just point, appointed yeah, from uh... the top. So it was all fake. Yeah, was all yeah fake. not really. So people can see what sounds in paper, even what sounds good in the constitution. It's a totally opposite in mm -hmm. reality. Even when I studied in law school, we were told that uh, you know um, law is actually not really to provide people with uh, equal protection and justice. The law is a, a tool for the governing class to govern the masses. We were so depressed <laughs> that we study in law school and this is what we're supposed to do. We become the tool uh, for the, the CCP to govern the regular Chinese common folks. It's mm -hmm. like, a, it's totally opposite. So you cannot mm -hmm. just read it in words. You have to say in reality what, what it is like. Yeah. yeah. Do you Same have another, you. It, let's share another screen that you have on, on the China's constitution. I hope people really do their own research, not just listen to um, so-called, uh, you know, state media to tell them, and uh, I'm, I'm worried about so-called free press in, in America today, maybe certain journalists, but when you look at the other mainstream media, it is very, very difficult to believe what they say. I've had, you know, so many conversations with young people here who are like, yeah, you know, that's not real communism. Communism is this and this and this. And then, uh, you know, I, I would be like, it's like, you know, communism on paper sounds good. And, uh, um, but any theory's objective is to is its practical application. When you apply it to reality, and it fa fails and fails and fails and kills people, you need to stop and and re and examine the theory itself. It's like a car. You know, if you design a car that keeps crashing and killing people, you have to stop and examine the car itself. And instead of blaming the people who are not driving it right, right? So it's like it's the same thing. Like when 
when something that fails so much in practice and people's lives are, are being wasted and destroyed, we need to stop and, and think about what is wrong with the theory itself. Yeah. yeah. What is uh, Article 3 here? The... It's um, Article 3. The state organs of the People's Republic of China apply the principle of democratic centralism. The National People's Congress and the local People's Congresses at various levels are constituted through democratic elections. They're <laughs> responsible to the people and subject to their supervision. Yeah, it all sounds That's great. what we're just talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's look at the number four. Number four, all nationalities in the People's Republic of China are equal. The state protects the lawful rights and interests of the minority nationalities and upholds and develops a relationship of equality unity and mutual assistance among all of China's nationalities. Discrimination against and oppression of any nationality are prohibited. Any act which undermines the unity of the nationalities or instigates division is prohibited. Yeah. So. Oh, wow, well, you know, that's laughable. Look at what the China is famous for today, yeah. right? The cultural mm -hmm. genocide of minorities, the Uyghurs and Tibetans, you know. Mongolian. So basically yeah. any minorities uh, who are deemed to be political dissidents who do not fit the party's narratives and don't comply and, and their culture ought to be eliminated, basically. And, uh, you know, and even when it comes to religion, right? Like, like the Falun Gong people was deemed to be post religion in the 90s. And uh, you can get arrested by, you know, practicing it. So, so again, on the paper, this sounds wonderful. Unity, everybody is equal. In reality, it's just totally opposite, you know. So it's uh, another thing I want to add on money is that uh, uh, people might, um, when they lecture us, a community of survivor, and they bought it into series and stuff like that. And, and the, they, they might not really know the history of other countries, right? I mean, we we'll just talk about China, but they can also study like a Soviet, former Soviet Union and Cuba, Venezuela, and all those countries, people want to flee, <laughs> want, want to get out. How come they don't love their so-called the paper utopian of communism, socialism, mm -hmm. and stay in their country? And but but our kids in this country bought into, you know, left media or the government um, educational agenda to say, you know what? We actually want to have a democratic socialism so people can vote for more welfare, you know, more free stuff. But do they understand that's how Chinese parents bought into that at the beginning of communism? From Mao, from the CCP, we will give you land if you support us. But the peasants in China never got the land. Land becomes owned by the people, by the state. And then they're starving to death. Oh, it's yeah. You know what we can do is just keep talking and tell our stories, and um, it's not you know like they get, like if you look at the world, it wasn't just China, it wasn't so former Soviet Union. Pretty, it is. They have not. There has not been one successful nation that uh, uh, has been led by you know uh, communist parties like North Korea, uh, North Korea, and Cambodia. You know under Pol Pot that commit they committed. A, a incredible genocide and it, it was just you know human um you know human skeletons are still piled up in, the, in their you know genocide museum and so it's like yeah i think people kids especially young young people you know they just really need to learn this history and learn the reality and the facts and the truth and uh, that that is just the only way to to truly make them understand you know what this truly is and where it will lead to well, there's some good trend, like a state of Florida passed the bill to um, a mandate as a part of, you know, K-12 curriculum. And they have to learn about history of uh, communism, the horrors, the evils. Actually, I'm invited to be one of the an oral history and like an eyewitness of communism to be interviewed next month. And, mm -hmm. and, and I have some people come to New Hampshire, interview me, which is a good thing. And uh, our state of New Hampshire had one bill to say, only say one hour, one hour teaching of communism. I, I don't think one hour is like too much to ask. That means they're not even teaching one hour yet. Wonder why our kids worship communism and socialism. What yeah. are they learning? Learning, learning about capitalism is bad. And uh, it's, it's uh, all the 
traditional class struggles now under you know Marxism, now they are all talking about racism. Everything's about race. Everything's about skin color. But then when, if they know the real history, if they know how identity politics works, the Marxist class struggle theory are easily to be seen today in in our today's social justice, you know, actually the work movement. And uh, that's another day we can talk about the similarities of, uh, you know, work movement with, uh, you know, the Mao's cultural revolution. Even Bill Maher talk about, it's like a, uh-oh, don't forget the previous revolution that's been out of control, you know? And uh, it's just so sad for our kids and to be taught this way. Somehow it's also parents' responsibility. And you are the you were the school tutor before, so you told your story about you know how you learned and about federal government involving education and the brainwashing the tutors, the teachers, uh, and the in trainings in teachers college. And then you go to teach our kids, of course. What do you expect, right? Yeah, it, it is our duty to tell the truth. That's that's all I can say. But I really well, we still can. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate you um, doing this show with me. It's good I have somebody like you to, to join me and then we're gonna get more and more immigrants to come here. So if you like our story, please like and share and follow us on YouTube and subscribe to this channel. We need to get our words out. We don't want to be shadow banned and also become a member on the locals.com. So we will see you again and next week. Thanks, Mani. Thank you, Lily. Bye. I'll talk have to you week. soon. Bye. Bye.